Honourable Member for Grand Prairie Wapiti. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise today to speak on Bill 1, an act to reduce school fees. I think it's a good uh, step forward in the right direction to lighten the load for Alberta's parents. But as my colleague from Calgary Albo, I want to focus specifically on the bill as it pertains to charter schools. I have a great small rural charter school in my area, Valhalla Community School. It is the smallest charter school in Alberta and the only truly rural charter school in Alberta. It is a K-9 school that serves the population in the surrounding 3,600 square kilometers around the helmet, helmet of uh, Valhalla. It is a rural school that serves families in the Valhalla Centre as well as the surrounding farming community. This school has a direct instructional model of teaching and learning through a phonics-based reading and writing program starting in kindergarten. The highly structured and sequenced approach to education meets with very high level of parent satisfaction, increasing levels of academic success on the part of the students, and sees increasing enrollment registration numbers for early elementary school. All of the kids and parents of Walhalla School attend school council meetings to get a sense of being involved in rural communities. This school believes that the long-term goal of rural education is to develop the skills, knowledge and values that will enable students to become strong and contributing leaders of tomorrow. I think I can speak for all of us and say that we share this belief in our next generation of Albertans. Bill 1 is designed to reduce school fees for parents of children attending public schools. Let me very, be very clear, charter schools in Alberta are public schools. So if this government aims to help the parents of children who attend public schools, then ch children who attend charter schools must be included. Unfortunately, this is not the government's plan. The government is reimbursing public schools through grants, but charter schools are not eligi eligible to receive those grants. So if another public school in the designated area can receive a government grant so that they don't have to charge parent school fees, why can't a rural charter school like Walhalla Community School receive the same grant? The expenses are going to be the same at both schools. The difference is that the designated public school can get money from the government and the charter school can't. Transportation funding is a long-standing issue. Transportation funding in rural Alberta is divided into base funding and distance funding. Kids who are in Peace Wapiti get funding from both base and distance funding. The transportation of Walhalla kids would only be eligible for base funding. In a $1.4 million budget, base transportation funding would be $90,000. To cover transportation costs in full would likely take another $90,000, which is 7% of the budget, which would have to come out of the operation funds, which is basically a teacher's salary. With this distinction in funding, the parents of children who attend charter schools will have to pay more than parents who send their kids to a public school in their designated area, even though they are both public schools. So if parents want to send their kids to a charter school like Valhalla because they think it's the best choice for their children, for their education, they are now at a financial disadvantage. Moving to a designated school from a chartered school that they believe in due to finances is not a choice we should be forcing our parents to make. I support the work that the Rural Charter School of Walhalla is doing to educate rural kids in my area, and I hope that this government can see that disadvantaging these schools by inequity in funding is not the way forward. I urge the Minister of Education to carefully consider how the money going to school boards could be more efficiently distributed to also lessen the school fees load for our Alberta Charter Schools. And uh, I'm not quite sure on, and I'm not clear on the Minister's plan going forward, you know, on how he's going to finance these. Uh, and I just hope going forward, you know, he doesn't reward the bad operators and punish the good ones. Uh, I know of large rural schools that have large areas that actually uh, lose a lot of, a lot of funding and transportation and they cover that cost from the classroom funding and uh, and they don't charge uh, transportation school fees and yet I know large schools and 
uh, cities, the school boards, actually make money on transportation and use that money to subsidize the classroom. And guess what? They charge school fees on transportation. So, you know, I, I don't think it's quite right that he punishes the bad offer or the the good operators and rewards the bad ones. So that's my comments. Thank you, Madam Speaker.